All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his glorious book, O believers, fasting is prescribed for you, as it was for those before you. So you perhaps will become mindful of Allah. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our master, Prophet Muhammad, is a servant and messenger, who says, He who observes fasting during the month of Ramadan out of faith and in the hope of reward from Allah, will have his past sins forgiven. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad, his household, companions, and upon those who follow him till the day of judgment. One of the bounties of Allah for his servants is that he singles out seasons for goodness in which blessings are granted. Mercy comes down from Allah and the reward is multiplied. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Verily your Lord has breath of his mercy in the days of your time, so expose yourselves to them. Perhaps one of you may get such a breath of mercy after which he, might not, he may not suffer any misery. Among the most virtuous seasons of goodness is the month of Ramadan. It is the greatest of all months. Its days are the best days and its nice nights are the finest and the purest ones of the whole year. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to express happiness for the coming of Ramadan and convey glad tidings to his companions. Abu Hurairah narrated that, There has come to you, Ramadan, a blessed month, which Allah has enjoined you to fast. In it, the gates of heavens are open and the gates of hell are closed, and every devil is chained up. In it, there is a night which is better than a thousand months, Whoever is deprived of its goodness is indeed deprived. The companions, may Allah be pleased with them all, used to ask Allah to give them life to Ramadan and to help them perfect their deeds. Ibn Rajab narrated that many of the righteous people used to ask Allah over six months that they witness Ramadan and ask Allah over another six months to accept their deeds in Ramadan. Yahya ibn Kathir said they used to pray O oh Allah let us live till the coming of Ramadan and keep Ramadan for us and accept our good deeds in it Jabir ibn Abdullah narrated once the Prophet peace be upon him mounted the pulpit upon the first step he said Amen upon the second step he said Amen upon the, th the third step he said Amen People said, we heard you saying Amen three times. The Prophet answered, Jabril came to me and said, may a man who witnesses Ramadan till its end without being forgiven be humiliated. So I said, Amen. As we prepare to receive this honorable month in the next few days, we need to follow the footsteps of Prophet peace be upon him and his companions in that month. We need, we need to follow their, their example of worship and good deeds. Every Muslim needs to revive his intention as intention is the secret of accepting one's deeds. The Prophet said, actions are judged by intentions, so each man will have what he intended. Thus, he whose migration was to Allah and his messenger, his migration is to Allah and his messenger. But he whose migration was for some worldly things he might gain, or for a wife he might marry, his migration is for that for which he migrated. Abu Huraira narrated that Prophet peace be upon him said that Allah said, every act of the son of Adam is for him except fasting. It is done for my sake and I will give a reward for it. By Allah in whose hand is the life of, uh, is, is the life of Muhammad, the breath of the observer of fast is better for Allah than the fragrance of musk. A Muslim has to increase his good deeds and adhere to the guidance of Prophet peace be upon him in the month of Ramadan. This includes the immediate iftar after Maghrib and the late suhoor. As the Prophet peace be upon him said, my ummah will remain well as long as they consume iftar early and delay suhoor. And he peace be upon him said, take suhoor as there is a blessing in it. A Muslim has to avoid eating and drinking in a wasteful way. As Almighty Allah says, eat and drink, but do not waste. Surely he, do, he does not like the wasteful. The Prophet also said, a human being fills no worse vessel than his stomach. 
It is sufficient for a human being to eat a few mouthfuls to keep his spine straight. If he has to, then he should keep one third for food, one third for a drink, and one third for his breathing. What a beautiful trait the, the rich show sympathy for the poor in the month of Ramadan. It is the month of generosity and charity giving. It is the month that embodies the meanings of mercy and kindness for orphans, widows, and the poor in all forms of solidarity. This would be a kind of bringing happiness to those people. Ibn Abbas narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was the most generous of all people. And he used to become more generous in Ramadan when Jabril visited him every night and recited the Quran to him. During this period, the generosity of the Messenger of Allah was faster than the rain-bearing wind. This is not confined to giving money. It, in, it also includes kindness, love, and fulfilling rights and responsibilities. A Muslim must increase his ritual deeds, such as reciting the Quran and pondering over its meanings, and observing the night prayer, as the Prophet said, he who observes fasting during the month of Ramadan out of faith and in the hope of reward from Allah will have his past sins forgiven. And he also said, whoever spends the night of Laylat al-Qadr in prayer out of faith and in the hope of reward will have his past sins forgiven. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, narrated once in the middle of the night, Allah's Messenger went out and prayed in the mosque, and some men prayed with him. The next morning, the people spoke about it, and so more people gathered and prayed with him. They circulated the news in the morning, and so on the third night, the number of people increased greatly. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, came out, and then and they prayed behind him. On the fourth night the mosque was overwhelmed with people till it could not accommodate all of them. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him came out only for the Fajr prayer and he wait, when he finished the prayer he faced the people and recited at the Shahud. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped by Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. And then said Verily, your, present, your presence in the mosque at night was not hidden from me, but I was afraid that this prayer, meaning the prayer of al tahajjud might be made obligatory, and you might not be able to carry it out. Then Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, believed that it was better to gather people behind one particular imam. In this regard, Abdul Rahman ibn al-Qarit said, I went out in the company of Omar ibn al-Khattab one night in Ramadan to the mosque and found that people praying in different groups, a man praying alone or a man praying with a little group behind him. So Omar said, in my opinion, it would be better to collect these people under the leadership of one reciter, that is, to let them pray in congregation. So he made up his mind to congregate them behind Ubay ibn Kaab, then on another night, I went again in his company, and the people were praying behind the reciter. And the Omar remarked, what an excellent bid'ah, that is, innovation in religion, this is. But the prayer which they don't perform but sleep at its time is better than the one they are offering. Meaning that prayer in the last part of the night, in those days, people used to pray in the early part of the night. This actually shows Omar's keenness on performing the recommended right prayer and establishing the unity of Muslims. Yet, true fasting means abstaining from all kinds of disobedience and sins, taking into account that the, there are many who fast and yet get nothing but hunger and thirst. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, there are people who fast and get nothing from their fast except hunger. And there are those who pray and get nothing from their prayer but a sleepless night. He also said, 
Whoever does not give up forged speech and evil actions and does not abandon foolishness, Allah is not in need of his leaving food and drink. Jabir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, said, When you fast, your ears, eyes, and tongue should abstain from telling lies and all what is prohibited. Also, you should abstain from hurting your servant. Furthermore, you should be crowned with serenity and dignity. Do not let your ordinary day be the same like you, the day you are fasting. Muslims should be keen on offering true fasting to Allah so that they would get the desired result from fasting, which is taqwa of Allah or God-fearing. We should also take in, into account that the placed months of Ramadan is a month of hard and diligent work. So one should not turn lazy during Ramadan on grounds of tiredness and fatigue. In actuality, many people incline to laziness and even sleep most of the daytime in Ramadan, which is against people's interests. In truth, all of this totally contradicts the ultimate objective of fasting, which is taqwa, about which Allah glorified he is, says, O oh, you have believed, decreed upon you fasting as it was decreed upon those before you, that you might become righteous. Taqwa is not achieved by laziness, and, but rather by exerting more efforts in worship, hard work, sincerity and watching Allah Most High. Being watchful of Allah Most High is one of the most distinctive features of fasting person, which require fulfilling the due rights of work. That's because the one who watches your prayer, fasting and abstaining from eating and drinking is the one who watches your sincerity in fulfilling the due rights of your work. Muslim Brothers Lawful provision and answering invocations shall top the list of fasting person's priorities. Thus, he should be fully aware of the fact that in the case he receives money from a work he does not perform, this means that he has consumed unlawful provision. That's because he will be receiving the money for work that he hasn't performed. With that said, I ask Allah for, for forgiveness for me and for you. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God deserving to be worshipped by Allah the Almighty and that our Master, Master Prophet Muhammad is a slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family companions, and upon those who follow his footsteps till the day of judgment. Muslim brothers, work and worship are concurrent. Allah Most High says, and say, do as you will, for Allah will see your deeds, and so will his messenger and the believers. And you will be returned to the knower of the unseen and the witnessed, and he will inform you of what you used to do. Careful investigation of the biography of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the biographies of the companions and the Islamic history give us the conclusion that the month of Ramadan is a month of work and production. Not only that, but most of the Muslim victories took place during that month. It is in Ramadan that the great battle of Badr occurred. This battle that served as a criterion between truth and falsehood, as Allah the Almighty granted triumph to the believers who were few in number. Allah says, When two parties among you were about to lose courage, but Allah was their ally, and upon Allah the believers should rely. And already had Allah given you victory at the battle of Badr, when you were few in number, then fear Allah, perhaps you will be grateful. Remember when you said to the believers, it is not sufficient for you that your Lord should reinforce you with 3,000 angels sent down? Yes, if you remain patient and conscious of Allah and the enemy, come upon you attacking in rage, your Lord will, will enforce you with 5,000 angels having marks of distinction. And Allah made it not except as a sign of glad tidings for you to reassure your hearts thereby. And victory is not except from Allah, the exalted in might, the wise. The opening of Mecca took place in the month of Ramadan. 
It was a great victory whereby Allah honored the Prophet peace be upon him and the, and the believers with him and humiliated polytheism and the polytheists. In the modern era, Ramadan witnessed the victory of 6 of October with which Allah enabled e Egypt to regain its land and dignity. During that war, the Egyptian soldiers raised the slogan, Allah is great. They were fasting, reciting the Quran, and making sincere invocations to Allah, which is why Allah granted them victory and enabled them to expel the, aggr the aggressors in defense of the religion, land, and honor. It was a practical lesson for anyone who thinks to commit aggression against Egypt. Actually, we are in a dire need to regain the spirit of Ramadan in all the fields of our life to achieve victory, reinforce the pillars of truth and justice, and to protect the land, honor, and dignity so that our Ummah would regain its due status among nations and countries, a thing that won't be achieved save with maintaining unity, working towards achieving one particular goal, and doing good for all mankind. O oh Allah, bless the month of Shaban for us. Make us live the days of Ramadan and accept our worship in it.